We call it social expectation because certain social group are expecting such behavior from you. The school has an expectation regarding your behavior. It's a social expectation. The family has an expectation regarding your behavior. That's social expect expectation. The workplace has an expectation towards your behavior. That is also social expectation. Do you get it? Or we call it the standard behavior that is expected by individuals in the society. So it could be what is being expected by a social group. It could be what is being internalized. It could be the standard behavior of you wherever you are within the society. That's social expectation. I think it's clear. Yes. So for social, social expectation, I wrote, children learn social expectation through processes like manipulation, especially of, to the hidden curriculum. So for children, because we are talking about how they learn to become human. Yes. So all these things will not come without social expectation. So for social, social expectation, we can learn it through manipulation, through exposure to hidden curriculum, knowing things that are not part of the school curriculum, that they can change our behavior as children. They can change our behavior. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a boy may be praised by, for taking part in, in a, as adult's physical activity, while a girl might be discouraged from even trying. So, what, what we are talking about social expectation these days, a child, as a boy, you might do some things that are even dangerous or risky. Mm -hmm. People will praise you for that because, oh, that's a man in you. But if a girl tries that, they might qu query her. They might question her for doing that because it's not an attribute of a girl. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. So there are other ways. In, so they, they are going to discourage the girl for doing the same thing as the boy is doing because it's not expected of a girl to do such. Yeah. Do you get it? So we have... Um, so we go on to... Conformity now. So, yeah, I wrote, I wrote from the tender age, okay. Do not try to conform to social expectation? They learn from parents and others. This might be true, okay. So, for children, there is the primary socialization, which is the family, the parents. The secondary socialization, the school, the work, okay. So, for children, what we need is conformity. Because when we talk about expected behavior, it means you are conforming to that social group that is expecting such behavior from you. There's, this, there's an expected behavior from the school. So if you are able to, to practice those behavior, it means you are conforming to the society. Yes. So what are those ways in which children try to conform to society, social expectation? One, they might do that. Through, yeah, they learn from parents and others. This might be through imitation and role modeling. So children can learn conformity, social expectation conformity, through their parents, either by imitation or role modeling. So when I talk about imitation, that means they do what their parents are doing. Yes. So they learn, they learn by copying what the behaviors of others. That is imitation. Do you get what imitation is here? So I'll be able to do that because I've seen others doing it. So I'm, I'm copying from them. Yes. So we can learn social expectation. Conformity for social expectation through imitation. The second one is through role modeling. For role modeling, this implies to acting as an example so that the behavior is copied by others. So you're going to act as an example. You are, you are the eldest. You, the way you're going to act in the society, the way you're going to act within the family, they will have to copy your way. That means you're acting like, like a role model to them. So they, they have to go with the same way you are behaving. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. So you have to behave that way for them to copy that way. Do you understand? Yeah. So that is what we call role modeling. So become their role model based on what you do. So these are ways in which people can learn or children can conform to social expectation. I think it's clear. Yeah. So for feminists, they don't see it that way. For feminists, they believe that social expectation is from the family, is primary socialization. I mean, social expectation should come from primary socialization, not secondary. Not secondary. So all clean. According to feminist socialist Anne Oakley, he argued that children learn the social expectations that go with their age, gender roles. This is done through four main reasons. Four main ways. So for Oakley, he believes that social expectation is true gender roles. And gender roles come from the parents. It is the parent that says, you have to behave this way, you have to behave that way. You have to put on this clothes, you have to put on, put on that clothes. Mm -hmm. So 
Whenever we think about gender role, it starts from parents. That's according to feminists. Do you get it? So ways in which this uh, gender role is being played by parents are one, by manipulation. So parents encourage, parents encourage and praise some activities and discourage others. For example, a boy may be praised for taking part in an as adult physical activity while a girl will be discouraged. So with manipulation, yeah, we talked about it before too. So with manipulation, parents try to praise you because you are doing something that is risky. Mm -hmm. But they, they see it as being a man. But when the girl does that, the parents will discourage her. Yeah. They wouldn't want her to do that. So that's manipulation. This is expectation too. The second one is by canalization. Parents, <coughs> parents might channel their children towards activities that are considered appropriate for their gender. For example, boys may be encouraged to play football, girls to take up ballet. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Dancing. So, according to feminists, they believe social expectation starts from parents through manipulation by encouraging boys to go on or to practice as adults work, but not encouraging, discouraging girls to do the same. By canalization, channeling you to certain boy activity and channeling her to certain girl activity, like you playing football, like her dancing. That is canalization. I think it's clear. Yeah. The third one is by verbal appellation. <coughs> For ver verbal appellation, I go. These are the ways in which parents address their children. For example, the word naughty may be used for boys, while pretty for girls, or being handsome for boys. So this is verbal appellation. So when these, vo these words used will let you to understand that, oh, you are a boy. Oh, I'm a girl. Mm. Do you understand? So this is another way in which parents make children to know who they are in terms of gender. Yes. And the last one is through different activities. Girls may help their mother with cooking, while boys, while boys may help their father with do-it-yourself tax, DIY. We call it DIY. Around DIY is just like activities that you, you choose to do instead of inviting professionals to get them done. Maybe plumbing, you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what we call DIY. So, girls will not do this. But fathers will do it, and their boy should follow suit. Yes, so, do you get it now? Yeah. So, these are ways in which, according to feminists, parents have, bring up, have tried to put children on how to behave within the society. So, they conform them. They make them to conform with social expectation in the society based on the agenda. So what you should do as a boy, what you should do as a girl. Is it clear? Okay. But there's criticism regarding this. So what are the criticism about unclear ideology? One, gendered behavior. So here I wrote, I wrote, gendered behavior is not only about how children are socialized. It may also be in the nature of boys and girls to want to follow what is considered to be gendered behavior. So it is not based on what the parents channel them to be. It might be in the nature of a boy to behave in a way that the society wants it to be, not just from the parents. So what we're saying here is that social expectation is not just from the parents. Because I'm a boy, I might see some attributes of boys outside and I want to behave that way. So it's in my nature to be, to act as a boy. Mm. Not because my parents want me to act as a boy. Yes. Do you get it? Yeah. Two, the family is not the only agency and children, uh, and children may learn conflicting expectations from other agencies such as peer group. So it is not, that's the criticism now. Mm -hmm. It is not only the, uh, the family that brings about socialization, there's peer group. So peer group might even make a boy or a girl behave in certain way. Mm -hmm. That is even conflicting the, the way the parents want them to behave. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So it should not be, it should not, we should not only focus on parents that are the only ones that could conform, that can make children to conform in the society based on social expectation. That is the point here. Yes. And the third one, through the mass media. The mass media, we're talking about advertisement, we're talking about TV, we're talking about films. Yes. Films, TV, advertisement, these things are gender in their own. Mm -hmm. The way they portray female things are different from the way they portray male things. So it makes it difficult for you as a mom or as a father to be, ge to be gender neutral. 
you won't be able to you won't be able to channel your child yeah. to behave in a way or in a pattern that is expected of you because the films they watch the adverts they see has already explained to them mm. what a boy should do what a girl should do which might be contradicting to what you want to, what you want from them as a boy and as a girl yes do you understand yes. so it means the mass media is also part of social uh, part of socialization secondary yes. so it is not only the male or the family so the family will try but there could be influence from peer group there could be influence from the society there could be influence from mass media so that is the criticism about feminist ideology regarding social expectation which they are they own, which their focus is basically on the family is it clear yeah. so that is all about social construction social construction will bring about social expectation but for social expectation to happen there should be conformity by ch with children and for conformity to occur we need socialization which is primary and secondary mm -hmm. for feminists they believe it is primary socialization that means conformity to social expectation but the criticism is that all social construction all social expectation are not just primary socialization they come also from secondary socialization like mass media like the peer group like the society as a whole is it clear yes